Today I want to talk about how to install and operate the DEF CON home switch. So the home switch consists of a few different pieces. It consists of this controller box, which has the detection circuitry and the activation circuitry inside. That has an AC power cord, which will plug into the wall. It also has a, a cable that connects to the controller box here. And this cable has a little quick mate on the other end, which will connect to the actuator assembly. Now the actuator assembly is the part that actually trips the breaker. So these two just simply plug together, red to red, black to black. And then finally, it comes with some really sticky double-sided tape that's used to mount uh, the actuator assembly onto the breaker. All right, so to assemble this, we need to attach the actuator assembly to the breaker itself. And all, all breakers are a little bit different, but this shows the general idea. So you'll use the double-sided tape. Um, you'll cut the pieces such that they fit down on the face of the breaker, and then you'll take the actuator assembly and stick it to it. All right, so I'll go ahead and do that piece. I'll attach the tape and I'll show you how to align the actuator assembly. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut the double-sided tape and stuck two strips of it down onto the face of the breaker. So all you have to do to do that is sort of measure the length you need, cut the, the double-sided tape and peel away the plastic and then stick them down. Now this tape is very sticky and very durable. So once you attach the, the uh, actuator assembly to it, it's difficult to get the actuator assembly back off. Um, it is possible, however, but you'd need to use some kind of a tool, maybe like a little plastic to wedge or something to wedge underneath and pry it off. All right? It just becomes really stuck once you attach it. So let's do it right the first time if you can. The screw goes face up when you're attaching it, so don't turn it upside down like that. So face up, and what you're going to do is you're going to try and align it as straight as you can, but not interfering with the breaker. You don't want to push the breaker part of the way already with the actuator stowed, okay? So all I'm going to do is line it up here as straight as I can. And then you're going to push it and hold it in place for about 30 seconds or so and just kind of put some pressure on it. Um, once this tape sits up, it's very difficult to pull it off. So we just want to make sure it's, it's nice and well attached here. All right, so once it's attached, you'll notice it doesn't move at all, all right? The idea, again, is this actuator assembly will drive the breaker and trip the breaker under certain conditions. All right, so that's the first step is to get that actuator assembly attached. Okay, so the next thing we might want to do is attach the actual controller box. And that can be attached different places. It could certainly be attached on the wall near the breaker panel. So it'll come with some screws to do that. In this case, I just used some of the double-sided tape and put it on the back of the box and just attached it to the side of the breaker panel itself. Now, not every configuration set up for that to work very well, but in this case, it seemed fine. So I just mounted it right here and you notice it's nice and sturdy as well. It's not going anywhere. So the AC power cord is gonna end up plugging into a receptacle. I'll just be plugging it into one of these bench receptacles here. So I'll set that out of the way. And that leaves me with one cable left. This is the cable for the actuator assembly that goes to the plug on the DEF CON home unit. So I'll go ahead and attach that as well. I'll start with this end. Now you just have to turn this this connector until it sits in part of the way, and then you turn the knob to get it to tighten down. All right, and then finally, you just push these two together, red to red, black to black, until they latch, and that is now attached. All right, let's go ahead and get all these cables out of the way just to make it kind of easy to see what's going on. All right, so we have that. So let's discuss how the system actually works. When I plug the unit in, you'll see the green light light, which indicates AC power is applied. And then the unit goes into a detection mode. It will now be looking for the radiated pulse from an EMP, that is the E1, E2 pulse. If it sees such a pulse come in, it will drive a signal over to the actuator assembly, which will then trip the breaker. That disconnects your home or business from the power lines, which is where a lot of the damaging energy can come in over time. So you're trying to disconnect very early in the EMP cycle. Likewise, if you end up with an overvoltage condition, let's say due to a solar coronal mass ejection or the E3 of an EMP, as that voltage starts to rise on the power lines, this box will monitor those power lines and when they get too high, it will again drive the actuator assembly and trip the breaker, once again disconnecting you from the power lines, which is what you're trying to do is disconnect your home or business from that damaging energy source. All right, so detects both the E1, E2 radiated pulse as well as the overvoltage condition that will develop on the power lines. Either case will cause the breaker to trip. So I'll go ahead and plug it in. 
So now the unit is in this detection mode looking for the radiated pulse or the overvoltage condition. So to show the unit operate, I could either turn up the AC voltage that goes to the system, or I could generate some kind of radiated pulse that it could detect. In either event, it would drive a signal over to the actuator assembly, which would trip the breaker. So while I could turn up the voltage, I think it's uh, more interesting to go ahead and fire a pulse at it and show that get detected. So to do that, I'm gonna use a small handheld pulser. Now it's not as powerful as an EMP, of course, but it does do a, generate a pretty powerful pulse, which the unit will detect and then trip uh, the actuator assembly, which will drive and trip the breaker. So let's go ahead and fire the pulse and watch it get detected. Now what you'll see is the actuator assembly will start to move and you'll hear a sound, which is just a tone indicating that it is actively driving the actuator. Now once that breaker trips, of course, all power will be lost, so this light will go out and the system will be dead. Now we'll have to talk about how to recover from that state after we do this demonstration. Now let's fire the pulse. So you see the actuator assembly moving, trips the breaker. As soon as it trips the breaker, the light goes out and the system is no longer active. All right, so we have now disconnected from the utility grid at that point, uh, saving the home or business from any energy that might be coming in on those power lines. Eventually, the user will deem that it's safe to bring the system back online. Maybe the EMP is over or the coronal mass ejection is over. And so they'd like to bring their home back up. Maybe they're going to use a secondary power source or maybe the grid is back online. So the problem is that if they try and throw the main breaker, you'll see that this actuator assembly is actually in the way and would interfere from you being able to throw the breaker. So we have to reset the system. All right, now it's very simple to do that. I'll walk you through those steps. So first thing you do is you take out this little pin, a little locking pin at the end of the actuator arm, this little end effector here. And then you just simply compress that end effector down just with your fingers. And you'll notice the actuator arm is still out so we have to retract that some way. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna apply power back to the system, we're gonna manually retract it, all right? So first thing I gotta do is throw the breaker now since I've moved this arm out of the way. All right, this is a big heavy breaker, but I'll go ahead and get it tripped back. All right, so I tripped the breaker back, so now we have power back in the system, light comes back on, everything's back operational again. So now we just need to reset this actuator arm and the way we do that is we have a direction switch and a drive switch on the actual unit here. So I'm going to go ahead and push the direction switch the other way, and you have to hold it down because it's spring-loaded, and then you push the drive switch. And you'll see the actuator arm resets. You just hold it until it stops moving and let off of it. And notice that direction switch automatically goes back to the forward position, so you never have to worry about resetting it or forgetting to reset it. So. It's all ready to go. All I have to do now is take my locking pin, put it back in place, so everything's right back to where it was. Everything's fully operational. The unit is back in its detection mode. The actuator assembly has been reset uh, into its original position. So again, it's right ready to detect either another EMP, another overvoltage condition. It's right back in the reset state. Okay, so that's the DEF CON home switch system. Of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them to me and I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope that this demonstration was helpful.